good morning from Rio, Vahe Gregorian, Kansas City Star here, alongside Luke DeCock from Raleigh. Another McClatchy uh, moment. <laughs> uh, this is really not backed by popular demand, but it's uh, it's something we, we want to do. So uh, we've been kind of all over the place in the first week of the Olympics or so here. Luke has been pretty entrenched in basketball, and it's been a bit of a weird time for the U.S. men's team. I don't think it's been the dominance that people become accustomed to. What What's happening there? I think there's a couple things going on. One is this team just isn't as talented as the 2008 and 2012 teams. And I think we knew that coming in. But typically, there's enough of a talent gap there between the Americans and the international teams that they can overcome sort of the international team's teamwork and, and the fact that these teams play together all the time and over a period of years. But we haven't really seen that so far. In fact, one of the things that I think this talent gap or the lack thereof has caused is there's almost zero intimidation factor <laughs> among the international teams. They're not scared of this U.S. team. Um, Serbia went down almost 20 points in the first quarter and never even blinked last night. Um, there's a real lack of a fear factor there. And on top of that, you know, this U.S. team has 10 new Olympians. We knew that would be an issue coming in. And they've just showed tremendous naivete in the international game, the officiating, how the other teams play. Um, a lot of these problems are self-inflicted, and they're in real trouble. There's a good chance they could lose a game at the Olympics. And we saw with the women's soccer team yesterday, you know, if you lose in the quarterfinals, you're done. And it doesn't matter how good you are or how many gold medals you have. If you have a team that's not quite as good as it's been in the past and you're missing some veteran players, you know, this can happen to you. If it can happen to the women's soccer team, it can happen to anyone. And I, unlike Luke, I've been a little bit more at some of the sure, surer things like Michael Phelps and, and uh, U.S. women's gymnastics. It's been, been some really interesting stuff. But uh, we've been talking recently about how we just don't ever get outside the Olympic bubble. And maybe the highlight of my day yesterday was not only seeing archery and some really good sportsmanship there, but having Igor, the uh, uh, volunteer from Rio 2016, insist on taking us out to some Brazilian barbecue about two blocks away. And it was great. Uh, I don't think I'm going to try to rate it compared to Kansas City barbecue, just two different experiences, but really nice to get out of the bubble. And we'll, we'll close up here in a second asking Luke when the last time he got out of the Olympic bubble was. Uh, it's been a couple days. I had a, a, a night free a couple days ago, and I went and had dinner on the beach and just kind of a, a quieter a quieter night. Been a lot of late nights and early mornings. Not, you know, out enjoying ourselves, but working. The swimming, the swimming has been really late at night. It's nice to kind of have that behind us and and, uh, and get on to some of the other stuff, like track, which will be really late at night. It will be really late at night, and, and we're looking forward to that next phase of the Olympics. And thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll, we'll be back, hopefully, with another video here in a few days when we get our breath again.